everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs, and it's day 11. We're almost to the end of my 12 days of Christmas projects. Uh, today, we're using the Wishes All Around bundle. This is a really fun bundle. Um, it's got three different wreath dies, which I especially like, um, and then this one image, and then some great little accessories to go along with these wreaths. If you haven't checked out the last 10 days. Make sure you go back on my blog. I have two projects each day. Some of them actually even have three projects. Um, for you here at the middle of December, you know, if you're scrambling, trying to get all your last minute treats and gifts and cards made, I've got lots of ideas for you. Okay, so today I'm keeping it somewhat simple. I've kind of <laughs> kept things not simple the last few days and I thought hey we are we are getting down to the wire we need to keep things simple so I've got a card and a little Debbie treat for you well we'll start with a card and we're going to stamp that uh, wreath in garden green we're also going to stamp the little guys the, the little tree twice in garden green and we're going to do this on basic white so let's See, you know what, actually, this, I've got several pieces of white here. I need to make sure I use the right ones. This one is gonna go right here. So that's not the one I wanna stamp on. Let's do this one right here. Almost messed up my card stock. All right, so there we go. These are, this is a red rubber stamp, which is, means it's cling mount. You can't see through it, but it stamps really good. You know, I can't decide if I like the photopolymer, which is the ones you can see all the way through, or cling mount best. I don't know, I love them both equally for different reasons. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna turn my plate over. This is one of those we wanna make sure that our die is exactly where it needs to be. So make sure if your plate is warped, turn it so that it kind of curves down like that. I just find that that does a little bit better. The die set actually has three of these little dies, which is nice. If you're cutting out a bunch of them, you can cut out three at a time. I like when that happens, when we have multiples of one die. All right, now let's carefully set that on there and run it through. This is a really clever design, this tree wreath, I think. Let's take it out, and there you go. Pretty cool, right? All right, while we have the cut and emboss machine here, we're gonna use this Christmas Tidings embossing folder. And I wanted to make sure to show you, this is a little bit different. Most of the embossing folders I use are our 3D embossing folders, which means they're thicker. But this is your standard um, embossing folder. I don't know, most of ours usually are the thick ones for whatever reason, but this one is not, it's a standard. So you're gonna remove plate two and keep plate one there. Let me see if I can find that piece of paper now. And also notice there's this line right here on your embossing folder. That's to help you line up your paper so that your embossed images are straight. You're gonna, Keep your clear plate. You know, with the 3D embossing folders, we get rid of the clear plates. But for the, the normal standard embossing folders, you actually use both plates. All you do is take out that uh, plate two, which is a sh shim. I, I call it a shim because it's pretty thin. All right, so Christmas tidings. This is a kind of a font, um, textural. Is that the word? It has a lot of words on it. Textural. Um, type set maybe, font, I mean, uh, embossing folder. And uh, it's pretty cool, I like it. All right, now let's put these things together. We are gonna need, do I have grid paper? I do, over here. On this, I created a background for our uh, stamped wreath because I didn't want it to just be by itself. So I'm gonna take my garden green ink again, and that little tree. And I'm just gonna stamp that tree all the way around, all right? And don't worry about it being perfect because you are really only going to see the edges. All right, and then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna go the other way. 
I mounted my um, sticker crooked, so I have to really look at the edges of my stamp rather than the sticker. All right, this is just creating a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of texture in the background. All right, we're gonna need some dimensionals. And let's see, do you think we can use regular sized? I think we can. I'm gonna use three regular sized dimensionals. One, two, and three right there. And we're gonna stick this on here. I didn't even tell you what I used to make this. These are the deckled edge circles, the deckled circles to create that wreath. One, the largest one is just a little bit bigger than the outside of our wreath, and the smaller one is a little bit smaller than the inside of our wreath. That set has a ton of circles in it. I think if you use any of them, it would be fine. Okay, let's start adding all of this together. We're gonna take this wreath that we've made and we're gonna put it right here in the middle of our embossed piece. And then I've got a piece of garden green. We're gonna mat this with garden green. I love traditional Christmas colors, red and green. I always, you know, if I have to choose, I'm always gonna go back to traditional red and green. Now I do like the other colors We've used lots of colors this year for Christmas, but if I had to only pick one color combination for Christmas, it would just be your traditional red and green. This is the uh, One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper. I like this red color. It's just, it's just a very uh, light pattern on there. And then I'm gonna take some dimensionals and add this to our card like that all right on the inside i have a piece of basic white it's nice to fancy up the inside of your card i don't always do it but it really does make things a little bit fancier and just this is the strip that was left over from that paper that I cut there on the front, that one horse open sleigh. We'll trim that to the edge. And then those two little guys that we cut, I think we are gonna need many dimensionals for these. We're gonna put some dimensionals on the back. Did you ever think about putting dimensionals on the inside of your card? You totally, absolutely can. All right, let's put that there and this one can go like that all right now we need our sentiment our banner across the front and i'm wondering if i left myself enough paper i don't know if that's long enough let's see well let's see can we go across let's just go across this edge we've got a long edge right here i am going to use real red and stamp Christmas greetings right across the edge. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take my trimmer, keeping things simple, and let's just slice that off. Like that. And then I want to make sure my edges are, are even. I think they are. I brought over my banner punch. Let's see how far out. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Maybe we want to go in a little bit. No, let's, let's do this and see, and then we'll decide. There we go. Yeah, no, I think that looks good. All right, two more dimensionals. Put that right there. And then a red bow. This is red ribbon from our burlap and red ribbon combo pack, I believe is what it's called. 
The supply list, of course, and the measurements will be on my blog today. I am also typing up a PDF of all, I think it's gonna end up being 26 projects that you can earn for free if you shop with me this month. It'll also be available in my PDF store after the 12 days is done. All right, there you go. That's beautiful. It's simple, but it's beautiful and I love it. Okay, now for the treat, last minute treats. Little Debbie, it always comes in clutch. These are the Nutty Buddy um, Christmas ones. And I saw something online that said this was their most popular Christmas tree. I would have thought it was the Christmas tree. But Little Debbie says it's the Nutty Buddies that sell the best during the holidays. All right, let's make a box. Need a piece of real red that is six and a half by four and a half. On the short side, let's do this side first. We're going to do half an inch one and a fourth, two and a half, and three and a fourth. On the sh long side, three fourths, and five and three fourths. All right. Now this box will fit any of the Nutty Buddy bars um, that little Debbie has. They come out with different ones during the year, but they have the my very favorite Little Debbie treat is that peanut butter and chocolate Nutty Buddy. That thing is delish, and I cannot bring them in my house because they tempt me too much. All right, burnish those lines, and then cut off the corners, okay? That corner um, little rectangle tab there, and I've cut this the corners off of this tab. And then we're just gonna snip snip, 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 and do the same thing down here. Snip, snip, and snip. And I can tell right here I need to trim this off a little bit. I cut off the other side of that score line. All right, I'm just, well, do we have tear and tape? Let's see. It's raining here today, so humid, humid, muggy, muggy. When it's like that, I know I need to use a little bit of extra Adhesive. I find the stamp and seal is a is a good enough adhesive for my 3Ds most of the time if it's not something too heavy. But for muggy days, humid climates, use something like tear and tape, or my favorite is liquid glue. All right, so I put adhesive, I put tear and tape along that skinny tab, and I'm folding it over to the other end. Now I am going to use liquid glue down here on the bottom just because it's easier. Fold in those side tabs and figure out which is the back. The back is wherever that edge is, where that paper meets. And so this is the front. So we're gonna do side first, then we're gonna do the back, and then we're gonna do the front. That gives you rounded edges on all four sides, all four edges of your front, if you fold that front tab in last. All right, it's a skinny little box. Let's slide this guy in. And we're not gonna adhere this one. We are gonna fold it in the same way, sides, back, and front. But we're gonna use ribbon to hold it closed. Okay. I'm gonna take that ribbon and set it right there on the end. Wrap it around the front. And then let's see if I can do this. I might need to set it down, put something heavy on it to hold it like that. All right, I know that looks weird, doesn't it? But I promise <laughs> it's gonna make sense here in a minute. I can't, the box is so light, it's hard to hold down. There we go. And pull that tight. Let's make sure we got it on the sides. There we go. Okay. Snip. I don't know, I may not have gotten it tight enough. Well, I think we'll just leave it for today. All right, there we go. There's your silver, silver trimmed ribbon. I have cut out two of these um, wreaths. Let me show you on the dies which one it is. 
this this one right here i've cut two of those out um, from garden green and i've cut out another deckled edge circle and this time we're going to emboss this in silver the silver embossing powder matches our silver edged ribbon make it merry all right versamark i used my embossing buddy there to remove any static cling that would hold our I didn't bring my tray over. That would hold our little granules where we don't want them. Um, let's see, I, do I have a piece of paper? Yes. You want to use your tray. <laughs> Mine's just across the room. It's a great way to funnel back in your powder. But piece of paper will also come in if you need it. If you can't find your tray or it's on the other side of the room like mine. Now hit it with a heat tool. It's gonna take about 10 seconds. And it'll be nice and shiny. Look at that, gorgeous. All right, now we're gonna take our liquid glue and I'm just gonna put a few little dots on this wreath and we'll set that down right there. I cut the circle so that the little pieces would come off the edge. Um, so the circle's a little bit smaller than the wreath is. Okay, and then this one, I'm gonna offset. I don't want them to be exactly the same. Set that on there. Now we are gonna add some enamel effects but as you know, enamel effects take some time to dry. So I'm gonna do it after I attach it to my box. So I've put my dimensionals on so it'll hold the ribbon in place. And we'll set that right there. And then I'm gonna grab my red enamel effects and I'm gonna add little berries all over whoa pull straight up guys i didn't do that pull straight up after you dot it it makes a little hershey kiss shape but when it dries it'll be round all right and so there are little berry shapes here on this die you'll see them they're round and you just add the berries around the wreath as you go you can use other colors too. We have six colors of enamel effects, but I'm just going to stick with the red berries. Keep it simple. Now, this is going to take a good, I would say, give it 30 minutes to dry. Maybe it's not that long, but just to be careful, just to be sure, you want to give your enamel effects lots of time to dry. All right, there it is. Now, the color looks pinkish now, but when it dries, it's the perfect red okay that's it for today make sure tomorrow that you join me live my last day 12 will be live um we'll be doing the horse and sleigh bundle and we're going to make some thank you cards because after all this we're going to need some thank you cards right right okay i will see you tomorrow thursday right thursday oh what's the date thursday um i don't have my watch on the 12th, the 13th, tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be, I'll be live on Facebook and then I'll upload it on YouTube, okay? All right, you guys have fun stamping. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.